Welcome to Crime With My Coffee. This podcast contains graphic descriptions and adult content. Mature audiences only, please. Hi, y'all, and welcome to Crime With My Coffee. I'm your fabulous hostess with the mostest, June. And I'm Suzanne. We're going to tell you some stories you've heard. Some you haven't. And some you'll wish you hadn't. All with a Texas twang. All right, well, welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Glad you could join us. Absolutely. And if you're here for the first time, go back. Pick one you think you want to hear and just listen to all of them. It's fine. We will let. Depending on which one it is, you might not really want to hear yeah, it, though. Yeah, maybe not. We, we, we got some doozies. <laughs> but we got some that are okay. We do. We do. We do. It's fine. It's fine. So what's in your mug this week? Well, in my mug, because surprise, surprise, we're in Texas, but it turned cold like in a day. And it's like almost yeah, our temperature here, our temperature here went from like 80 to 40. Like we topped a hill and saw a freaking state trooper, you guys. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. So it was, it was nearly 80 here yesterday. Yeah. My high today is like 40. If I'm lucky, I don't even think I'm getting out of the 30s. Yeah, yeah it's definitely different. You know, but give it a few days. It'll probably change because, hey, we're in Texas and that's okay. Yeah, by the end of this week, by the time this comes out, by the end of this week, I think we're supposed to be back in the 80s. Yeah, pretty close to it, I think. So, uh, well, in my mug, I, I'm actually drinking Starbucks uh, mocha. It's um like a chocolatey coffee, so I didn't have to put hot chocolate in my coffee. And the bag, I read somewhere what it said. Oh, yeah. So so the bag does say that it's uh, combining decadent notes of cocoa with our lightest roast results in a luscious chocolatey sip. I agree with that. I, I like that coffee. Yes, it's it's a good coffee. And I didn't want to drag out the hot chocolate that I had. So I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm having. And I just barely put a little bit of French vanilla creamer in it because I like creamer in my coffee. But after I did that, I was like, oh, I don't know why I didn't just put milk in there. It would have been fine, but I forgot. I don't always have milk, so I kind of <laughs> forgot. But... That's what I have in my mug. What do you have in your mug today? I have Franken Bones oh. from Bones Coffee Company because it is fall and I was able to order some again. So it's a chocolate hazelnut coffee. I've got my Dunkin' Donuts extra extra creamer in it. <gasps> I love it. Mm. Oh, it sounds delicious. It is fabulous. Yes. And my kitchen smells amazing because mm. I just brewed a fresh pot. Yeah, there you go. I love it. I need all the coffee today. You know, it's funny. I, I say that I would love like uh, coffee candles or something like that, right? Because I love the smell of coffee. Absolutely. But I got one one time and I was burning it. I had it going and I was like, oh, what is that smell? It kind of smelled like something was burning. That's why I don't like food flavor or f food flavored candles. I mean, food scented candles yeah. <laughs> because to me, they all smell burnt. Yeah, I was, it took me a long time to figure out because I kept walking in the room going, what is that? What? It, because I had it in the kitchen at the time. I was like, what is burning? But nothing was in the oven. Nothing was on the stove. And I, I could not get it figured out. And then finally I was like, maybe it's this candle. So I put it out and it stopped. I was like, well, there you go. So now I have a half burnt candle that I don't feel I'm going to use again, unfortunately. Okay. I apologize. My dog is nomming his bone that he gets every time we record. And I don't know, for some reason you can heck and hear it today. And I'm not so much of a tech guru that I know how to get rid of that sound. Yeah. Yeah. He is being a, 
NAMI today. Absolutely. <laughs> My husband's going to yell at me and be like, you know, you have a door to that office, right? <laughs> yeah, but outside. then he's going to get into stuff and I won't know it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're like toddlers. Yeah, he is definitely a toddler. Oh, geez. He's very loud today. So I'm sorry, guys. But I do have a case for us today. Hopefully enough of my talking will cover up his chewing and nomming and you won't hear it too much. Okay. <laughs> We're going to try. It's going to be fine. We're going to attempt it anyway. Um, I didn't really do any kind of a geography lesson on this. Okay. Just know that you need your passport. We're going to Italy. Oh, I want to go to Italy. Even though we're going to Italy, we don't quite start in Italy. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I mean, we got to get there. So I, I yes. understand. We're going to talk about the Getty family. Okay. Uh, J. Paul Getty was the Getty family patriarch. Here in a minute, we're going to start calling him Grandpa or Grandpa Getty. Okay. Okay. During the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, he made a fortune of millions mm. in the oil business. Millions in those days, numbers, dollars. Nice. So I can only imagine how many zeros uh, are behind those numbers today. A lot. A Enough lot. That you would not have to worry about anything. Ever. Ever. Yes. Ever. <laughs> He was reportedly a bit of a womanizer, though, and he did end up having five sons with five wives. Mm. Well, at least they were all wives. They were yes, others. <laughs> they were all wives. Um, it was rumored that he did have others, though. Mm. Yeah. But not sons, just women. Yes. Yes. Uh, he would end up founding Getty Oil. The J. Getty, or sorry, the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles and Getty Images. Nice. In 1957, Forbes would name him the richest man in the country. Oh, wow. Now, Getty Images, is that the same company that I've seen before? I've seen that somewhere before looking at photos or something and and i believe that it said getty imaging maybe i don't know i didn't wow. really google I mean, any of these companies that's kind of cool okay anyway sorry anyway he did however have a bit of a reputation for being a total cheapskate even though he had all this money. That's now how I he got the money. <laughs> I know. That's the, what I was going to say was I was watching something on TV the past few days and there were, or maybe I was listening to another podcast. I don't remember. I've done quite a bit of both the past couple of days with this weather. And they were talking about, you know, so-and-so had so much money and, but, but they were worried about, you know, a couple of hundred bucks on like a, a money exchange or something, a currency exchange. That's mm -hmm. what it was. Yeah. And they were like, you know, but if you have all that money, why would you worry about it? Well, because you have all that money. That's how you got all that money. Exactly. Because you're worried about all that. I'm just saying I'm that's why he, that's why he got all this money. Cause he was a cheapskate. He even went so far as to have pay phones installed in his huge English estate because he had moved to London in the late 1950s because he was totally obsessed with everything English. Uh-huh. But he had these payphones installed for his guests and his staff to use because his long distance bills were getting out of hand and he even had dial locks put on his landline phones so that they had to use these pay phones wow i mean i get it if you have a big estate and you've got a lot of people and they're calling a lot of people your phone bill's gonna be pretty big so eh, i get it of his sons we're we're gonna talk about john paul getty jr mm -hmm. though i did see it reported in one place that he was actually eugene getty but a lot, but pretty much everything else except for this one article says John Paul Getty, okay. the junior. So, but for the most part, we're going to call him Junior or Daddy Getty. Okay. Because he too had a son in 1956 that was named, depending on where you're reading it, mm -hmm. either Eugene Getty Jr. or John Paul Getty III. Okay. 
Now, I think where the John Paul Getty came in was uh, because they were named, I think they actually were named Eugene. Mm -hmm. But like I said, this happened in Italy over in Europe. And instead of the media and stuff calling them Eugene or Jean, they used Jean, which Ah. translates back to John. Yeah. Okay. Okay, makes so sense. you know, I think that's where it came from. But the third Getty went by Paul, so that's what we're gonna call him. Okay, so we're gonna have Paul and Daddy Getty and Grandpa Getty. Gotcha. Well, when Paul was about a year and a half old, his family moved to Italy so that his dad could run the Getty Oil Italian location. Ooh, nice. His parents divorced in 1964, and Paul moved back with his mom to the United States where they lived in Brentwood over by Los Angeles. Okay. You know, the super fancy mm-hmm. neighborhood because she remarried an actor. Oh, wow. That's that's exciting. You know, I I I think if you have a lot of money, you draw people with a lot of money around you. But if you're poor like us, you just know poor folk all the time. Okay, so if I pretend to have money, will I attract people that have money? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, everybody, I'm rich. So if you're (laughs) rich, let's be friends. (laughs) Yes, and just, you know, we'll swap money. You send me $100 and I'll send you 50 cents. Uh, So she married, she remarried an actor. His dad remarried too. Um, I want to say he remarried an actress. Ooh, wow. Do we know Over in these Italy. these uh, famous people's names? Or I did, but I did not write them down because okay. they're not really relevant to our story. I no, I get it, I get it. But so, but we do we do come upon another actor later, oh. and I did write their name down. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I keep interrupting. I just it's okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, a year or so after moving in with his new stepdad. Uh, His mom and stepdad separated, and so he moved back to Rome. Mm. There, he started bouncing around from one boarding school to another before he was finally expelled. Yep. Yep. One one thing that I read said that he was expelled because he burned down a billboard and filled the school with smoke. Mm -hmm. But another claimed that he was expelled for painting a hallway after being inspired by news reports of the Manson family. Oh, my goodness. No wonder he was in boarding schools because daddy didn't want to deal with him or anything. Your mom didn't want to deal with him. And we got plenty of money. We can send him to boarding school because that's how people get fancy. Yeah. Well, either way, by the time he was 15, he was no longer in school. He was doing whatever he wanted to do. He did some acting, some modeling. He sold some art, stuff like that. Okay. In January of 1973, he was arrested and held for a little bit after a demonstration protest- protesting the death of a Milanese communist who had been killed by the cops. Mm-hmm. He was held on suspicion of throwing a Molotov cocktail at this demonstration, mm. but his lawyer did his lawyer stuff and Paul was cleared and released. Wow. Good lawyer. All right. Well, Paul started living the vampire life. He's a teenager. He doesn't have school. He can do whatever he wants to do. So he's living the vampire life. He's gotcha. sleeping all day and partying all night. Yep. Sounds like. On July 10th of 19. 19- what? I said, yep. Sounds like 15 year olds. <laughs> well, I want to say he's like 16, 17 at this Still. point. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, almost seven or right around 17 because he was born in 56 and now we're in 73. Okay. So, got you. So he's 16, 17, somewhere around there. Um, July 10th, 1973, he's out doing the vampire nightlife thing. It's in the dark hours of the morning. He's walking around the Piazza Farnese. I have no idea how to really say that because I'm not Italian. There's not a drop of Italian blood in my DNA. I think you nailed so, it. I'm going to go with, I freaking nailed it. Absolutely. Anyway, so he's walking around here. He's drunk. And he said this guy, or this guy with four cars in pulled up next to him. No, this car, this car with four guys in it okay. pulled up. And, you know, the driver yelled out the window at him. And he turned around and he's like, huh, what? 
and three guys jump out of the car and they grab him and they put something over his face that he's pretty sure was filled with chloroform because the next thing he remembers is he wakes up in this car blindfolded. He's got his hands bound, his feet bound, and they're just driving around for hours. And one of the guys said, you know, hey, you're you're Paul Getty, right? And he was like, uh, yes, I am indeed John Paul Getty the third. Oh, I'm so fancy. And once he did that, um, Paul said that the guy said, okay, if you want something, ask for it. And if the answer is yes, you'll hear one clap. If the answer is no, you'll hear two claps. Remember this, because nobody will speak to you again. Oh, wow. Paul said that he decided right then and there he's not scared because they worked out a way to communicate with him. So he's obviously not going to be, you know, driven out here, shot and tossed in a ditch or anything. They, they have no plans on killing him yeah. if they're working out a way to communicate with him. Not necessarily. I mean, I wouldn't be so trusting. First of all, they nabbed you off the street. Yeah, but then they said, hey, this is your name, right? All right, cool. Now that we know you're him, here's how we're going to communicate. We got you for ransom, but whatever. LOL. And Paul said that that's when it sunk in. Oh, crap. I'm being kidnapped. And that may be more of a problem because they're going to want money. Because they're going to know that I come from money. Mm. My parents don't have the kind of money that they're going to ask for. And uh, grandpa's not going to come up off of any dollars for it. Right. He's 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 a big cheapy McCheaper person. And I'm screwed. Uh oh. Well, two days after Paul was taken, his mother got a ransom demand for 17 million dollars. Holy crap. By the way, I translated that into today's dollars, and it's like 118 million. Oh my goodness! Yeah. You know what? Well, his- Matt, I'll just have more kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I know you don't love me 17 million dollars worth. Thanks for that. Well, I could never come up with that kind of money, so I'll just have more kids. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> well, his mom said look i don't have that kind of money i i don't you know i i divorced his dad like 10 years ago almost you know and the kidnapper said well you, you can get it from london wow this sounds like an inside job they know I, a little bit i don't guess they knew that grandpa was a cheapy mccheaper person yeah you know they just look at the zeros behind his name and that's all they see Well, they made Paul write a couple of letters, one to his mom that said, Dear Mummy, I have fallen into the hands of kidnappers. Don't let me be killed. Arrange things so that the police don't intervene. You must absolutely not take this thing as a joke. Try and get in contact with the kidnappers in the manner and the way they tell you. Don't let the public know about the negotiations if you don't want me killed. I want to live and be free again. Don't publicize my kidnapping. Pay, I beg you. Pay up as soon as possible if you wish me well. This is all you have to know. If you delay, it is very dangerous for me. I love you, Paul. Ooh. He was also forced to write a letter to Grandpa. Mm Mm-hmm. It said, I know that we haven't been very close, but I hope you know that I love you. Please do whatever you can to get me out of here. This is serious. Love, Paul. Okay. Okay. Well, his family and his friends, and so therefore the authorities, they're not really taking this kidnapping thing seriously. Partly because Paul had joked several times in the past that, nah, you know, I've got all this money in a trust fund, but I can't touch it for a million years. Mm -hmm. So I would totally be willing to fake my own kidnapping to make grandpa come up off of some money. Yep. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I don't know. I haven't heard the story yet. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's what his family is thinking. That's what his friends are thinking. Kind of what the authorities are thinking because they're hearing this from their from from Paul's friends and family. Right. Well, his mom told the kidnappers to just go ahead and talk to Paul's attorney from here on out after their first contact. You know, you talk to the lawyer. 
the lawyer will handle things. There you go. So the lawyer got a call from them on July 23rd, and they told him, this is a kidnapping. We are serious. Do as you were told and prepare a ransom. And then they hung up the phone. Hmm. Two days later, the lawyer got a letter demanding $17 million for Paul's return. The day after he received this letter, they called to confirm that he had received it. And he said, mm, yeah, I got this letter. And they're like, okay, cool. We want that amount in small bills. And we'll contact you later on, tell you where to drop it off. And, you know, when and all of that. And you're either going to pay or Paul's going to be killed. And, you know, let us know on either the radio or TV if you agree to these terms and hung up. Mm-hmm. Well, during a press conference on the 26th, the lawyer said the request is unreasonable. They should ask for less. <laughs> that means you're not getting your money. Four days later, the kidnapper said, what do you mean it's unreasonable? We know Grandpa is freaking loaded. Mm-hmm. So get us our money. Negotiations go back and forth for a bit. All the while, Paul's being moved around from cave to cave, hut to hut, in an unknown to him region of Italy. We would find out later on that he was actually being held in an area in the toe of the boot known as Calabria. Calabria? Whatever. Yeah. That's it. Kind of known for a mafia type gang that ran the area. Mm. And they're keeping him barely fed, all hyped up on booze, occasionally letting him rinse himself off in a stream, you know, just enough to keep him alive. Okay. And I'm sure he's hating every minute of it because they found him when he was drunk. So I'm sure he hates it. Sure. You know, sure. At some point, Grandpa put out a statement that said, although I see my grandson infrequently and I am not particularly close to him, I love him nonetheless. However, Mm -hmm. I don't believe in paying kidnappers. I have 14 other grandchildren, and if I pay one penny now, then I'll have 14 kidnapped grandchildren. Oh, you right, Grandpa. You are right. So Grandpa has no intentions of paying any ransom. Does not sound like he is going to pay to me. So negotiations go on even more. And Daddy Getty comes in and he's starting to think, I'm, I'm starting to think my son has legit been kidnapped. Because it's been a while. Like, it's been months. Oh, wow. And Paul still hasn't shown up. I'm starting to think somebody really does have him. Okay, but I'm really surprised that they are keeping him alive this long. You know, I would say, you know what? Okay, I'm not getting the money. Get out. I'm going to find somebody else rich to steal. Well, so Daddy Getty calls Grandpa Getty. And he says, look, I can only come up with a million or so. Can you help me out here? I just want my son back. And Grandpa said, I'm, I'm not budging on this. I can't. I cannot budge on this or else the rest of my grandkids are going to be at risk of being taken. Mm-hmm. You know, one versus all of them. Right. You know, and I know that sounds cold hearted, but I mean, Grandpa's kind of right on this. I, I agree with Grandpa. Well, like I said, negotiations have been going on for months. It's been several months. In fact, it's been almost four months that these negotiations have been ongoing. The kidnappers finally tell Grandpa, look, you either cough up the coinage or we're going to send you your grandson back in pieces. Oh. Grandpa's still not budging. (sighs) Grandpa's still saying, nope. I'm calling your bluff, kidnappers. Hmm. And then one day, Paul heard on the radio that his kid, because his kidnappers had given him a radio Mm -hmm. to listen to, to kind of keep him, you know, entertained so he's not all by his lonesome in this cave or hut or wherever he was at this time. Okay. He's listening to the radio and he hears a news report come across that they had found a burned body that the authorities were pretty sure was Paul. Oh, no. Yeah. And so he's like, no, 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 I'm here. I'm still alive. That's not me. Blah, 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 blah. You know, come find me. This maybe worried the kidnappers, too, because not long after this, they moved Paul yet again, washed his hair, 
gave him a haircut, fed him some heckin' delicious food, Mm. came back about an hour or so after feeding him, blindfolded him, shoved a gag in his mouth, held down his arms and legs and sliced off his ear. Oh, no. They bandaged it up, sent Paul off to bed. They, they did, over the next few days, give him some, you know, shots of penicillin and vitamins and stuff like that and made sure he got up and got moving around to kind of get the blood flowing and, and get it healing so he's not just laying there dying, you know, because they don't want him dead. Right. They, they want this money. Absolutely. Yeah. So they take this ear and they take a lock of his hair from the haircut that they gave him after washing his hair. Mm-hmm. And they wrote a little note and they dropped it in a package. And they dropped it off at the post office. It was addressed to a newspaper in the Rome area. But when they didn't get a response as soon as they expected, they got to talking with each other. And then they went, oh, my gosh, we're idiots. We forgot about the ongoing postal strike in our country right now. Oh, no. So it was like three weeks before this package was delivered. <laughs> So they find this package, this newspaper does, they find this package, and the note says, this is Paul's ear. If we don't get some money within 10 days, the other ear will arrive. In other words, he will arrive in little pieces. Mm, mm, mm. So the authorities are like, mm, no, we, we don't think this is Paul's ear. There's no way. So they call his mom down. She comes down and she looks at the ear and she feels it, you know, touching on it and stuff. And she's like, no, this, this is Paul's ear. I can tell by the way it feels and all these freaking freckles on it. Like, this is my son's ear, you guys. Oh, wow. The cops are like, mm, eh. I, I don't really think so. So they, they performed some more testing on it. And then they came back and said, well, no, yeah, we're pretty sure this is Paul's ear. Uh, okay. Yeah. And Paul's like, yeah, that's my ear. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so the police, after they, they come back, after their testing on this ear, they came back and they said, you know, yeah, you know, it's probably Paul's ear. And um, yeah, we no longer think his kidnapping is a hoax. We're pretty sure this kid has been kidnapped for real, you guys. Wow, it took them long enough, really, to believe it. I know. On November 16th, the lawyer got another call from the kidnappers. They told him to go to this one place over here, and he would find something interesting. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. That's what everybody's thinking. So he goes. and But what he found were actually Polaroid pictures that they had taken of Paul after they cut his ear off kind of a proof of life type thing and a proof of no that really was paul's ear type thing and and look he's still alive got you well all of this finally convinced grandpa to say fine i'll cough up some dollars Mm. but see he had been having his accountants working behind the scenes where no one could see and they had found some sort of fancy rich people loophole for him He said that he would not pay the original requested $17 million ransom. Instead, he would pay $3 million. That was the maximum amount that he could write off on his taxes at the end of the year. (laughs) It's got to be beneficial to Grandpa because that's how he got all the money. Oh, and did I neglect to mention that Daddy Getty has to pay back this entire amount to Grandpa along with 4% interest? Okay, first of all, if you're writing it off on your taxes, Grandpa, I don't think that you have to get it paid back. Well, I think if you write it off on your taxes, you can't write off all of it. Well, Well, I mean, you can write off all of it, but you don't get... I, I don't know. Taxes are weird. Yeah. And I, I've never been involved with any kind of taxes with millions attached to it. So Neither. I'd like to be. I mean, I have been because I'm rich. So I need yeah. all my rich yeah. friends to come hang out with me. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this is why we're not hanging out because I'm not rich. <laughs> <laughs> the money is gathered. And on December 12th, it was dropped off at the location that the kidnapper said they wanted it dropped off at. It weighed more than a freaking ton. It's a lot of money. I I know, but 
I a a ton. That is like as much as my Jeep. Did did they like I don't know, leave it in a truck so somebody could carry this money? It was in bags. It was in bags. On the side of a road somewhere. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the kidnappers come in, they swoop it up, and they take off. They go to Paul, and they tell Paul, look, we got the money, you're going home soon, Just, it's just not going to be today. Because, you see, there's a gas shortage going on in our country, and we don't really have the gas right now to take you back home, so you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Why didn't they drop him off when they picked up all the money? Well, I guess they had to take it back and count it and make sure they had their $3 million and not two point eight. Okay, sure. I don't know. Well, the next day, they blindfolded Paul. They drove him around for a few hours. And then they dropped him off saying that they would go and call his mom. He waited until he was sure that they were gone. And he took off his blindfold and he started walking. He tried hitchhiking, but nobody was going to stop and pick up this guy. He's filthy, dirty, Bed raggled. He's got this bandage on his head. Uh, you know, I'm not stopping for him. Me Are neither. you kidding me? I don't know. I mean, depends on if he has coffee or not. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, <laughs> dirty or not. If he's got, yes, coffee or tacos <laughs> or both. Okay, I'll probably give him a ride or puppy or baby goats, <laughs> <laughs> puppies. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, there's, there's, or we know how we're getting kidnapped. It's fine. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, but nobody's stopping to pick him up while he's trying to hitchhike. So he decided to lay down and play dead in the road. Uh, now, no, now you're going to get run over. Well, nobody stopped for him either when he was pretending to be a dead body. So he got up and he starts walking some more <laughs> <Yeah>. again. <laughs> wow. Okay, Paul. Okay. Well, he finally got a truck driver to stop, and he tells this truck driver, you know, hey, look, I'm John Paul Getty III. I was kidnapped like four or five, six months ago. My kidnappers finally just let me go. Can you take me to the nearest police station? Mm -hmm. And this truck driver was like, uh, bro, you look super sketchy. You're not getting in my truck. I don't think so. And he just kept on going. Uh, yeah. So as he's going, <laughs> why did he even stop if he's not going to give him a ride? I don't know. But this truck driver's driving down the road some more and he hears on the radio this news story about John Paul Getty III, who had been kidnapped four, five, six months ago and was still missing, even though the ransom had just been paid. They still hadn't heard, you know, where he was. And he's like, oh. Maybe this guy wasn't a crackpot after all. Maybe he was telling me the truth. So he drove to the nearest police station and he told them about this crazy loon guy that he thought might not be a crazy loon guy mm -hmm. and might actually be the guy they're looking for and right. where he was. And so the cops all rush out there and they find him and they're like, oh, my God, it's you. And they take him and they feed him and they call his mom and then they're interrogating him. Not necessarily interrogating him. They're questioning him, trying to get right. his story, you know, find out what right. went on, what happened, who were these people, you know, how are you still alive? What what happened to you while you were gone? You know, all this stuff. And then his mom comes in and goes, No, questions are done. I'm taking my son and we're leaving. And she takes him and she checks him into this like high end private clinic. Okay. To where, you know, he could get treated, get better, blah, 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 blah. And and he gets all better. And he calls his grandpa so that he could thank him for paying his ransom. Nice. But his grandpa wouldn't even come to the phone. Now, Not I had that. Thir grandpa. Now, hold on. Hold on. I had that same look. And I've heard it reported several times that grandpa just refused to come to the phone. But in an article that I read that was a base that was most of where I got the information for what happened to him while he was in captivity. Mm -hmm. it, it was an article in the Rolling Stone that it was an interview that they did with Paul, like I want to say a year or two after he was kidnapped uh -huh. for him to tell his story. And he goes, you know, he said in the story, you know, yeah, I called grandpa to tell him, thank you. Grandpa wouldn't come to the phone because grandpa was like scared of a lot of stuff. Like grandpa had some, head demons of his own he was scared of flying so he didn't fly anymore and that particular day that he called he was scared to talk on the phone because he thought something was going to come out of the phone and get him and so i had this conversation with my grandpa through one of his staff members like his staff member was the man in the middle okay 
And, you know, Grandpa said I was welcome. But everywhere it's just been reported that Grandpa refused to come to the phone because, I mean, that makes him sound like a total douche. Right, right. But not really. I mean, Grandpa gave up some money. I mean, he, he did. He, he did. He had Ish. douchey stipulations to it. <laughs> but, you know. I mean, hey, if you're going to lose $3 million, that's going to hurt no matter how many millions you uh, have. I, I would so, agree. So, you know. I would agree. Anyway, as for his kidnappers, nine members of the Undrangheta gang, and I know nailed I butchered it. that. I know you nailed it. Basically, the Undrangata was this totally terrible mafia-style gang that had been kidnapping people for ransom Mm -hmm. for years. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, nine members of this gang were ended up arrested. A lot of them were high-ranking members of this particular gang. Most of them got off on lack of evidence or technicalities or they greased the right palms or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I don't really know. Right. Two people ended up being sentenced and or being convicted and sent to jail for kidnapping Paul. I couldn't really find anything on, you know, how long they were sent to jail for or anything like that everything that i read just said nine people probably not but everything i read just said you know nine people were arrested two were convicted the rest were let off okay and most of the ransom money was never recovered well there you go so paul ended up marrying his girlfriend it she was his girlfriend before he was kidnapped and then when you know he came back and they're still together she was, I want to say, six years older than him. Okay. Maybe eight years. I don't remember. It was several years. Okay. Anyway, and when he married her, this kind of caused a rift in his family and kind of basically cut him off from the family fortune. Aw. Yeah. And they did end up having a son together. His name is Balth- Balthazar Getty, and he is a current actor He's been on several things on TV. Um, if I showed you a picture of him, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I've seen that guy around. You can Google him. I'm going to Google him. I just love the fact that they named their son Balthazar. I I'm like just that saying name. that's that's fabulous. Anyway, Paul ended up adopting his wife's daughter that she had from a previous relationship. Now, after all of this was said and done, oh, everything. I know him. Yep. See, I knew you would. <laughs> I do. I do. So after all of this was said and done, obviously Paul had some issues. He had some demons. He had some stuff going on. He didn't really know how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And so he ended up turning to alcohol and drugs. And at the age of 25 in 1981, he ended up having a narcotics induced stroke oh. and was left paralyzed and partially blind. <gasps> and he ended up requiring care for the rest of his life. Like he was in a wheelchair. His son, however, said that that never slowed his dad down. His dad even had a special attachment thing he built and put on his wheelchair so that he could still go skiing. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so his mom ended up taking care of him in his home that had been remodeled to basically be turned into a fancy private hospital type place mm-hmm. until he died at the age of 54 in 2011. That's my case. That's what I got for you this week. The kidnapping of John Paul Getty the third. Wow. Wow. That's that's freaking crazy absolutely crazy i know that it's insane it's nuts yeah so weird i just love the fact that grandpa was like i'm not giving you any dollars and then grandpa was like okay fine i'll give you dollars but But i'm not gonna give you near what you want i'm only gonna give you what i can write off on taxes and not Mm -hmm. up anymore Mm -hmm. gotcha wow that's that's crazy that's absolutely crazy Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I got. That's what I got. That was Grandpa was a character. Oh, you know, he was probably fun to hang around, though. 
I bet he was. Uh, it, so in the article that I read that where the where Paul did the interview with Rolling Stone, mm-hmm. he said, you know, that he did spend a little time with his grandpa, but not like a whole lot. And he was kind of boring. Really? Kind of kind of stuffy. Kind of like that rich stuffy. Uh, yeah. Might not be as fun as I think then. Never mind. I don't so, want to hang out with him. Never mind. Is, is how it came off to me. Okay, the, so, the different interactions he was describing with his grandpa. All right. So I, I have a question. So originally okay. there was a trust set up for, for Paul anyway. But yes. um, I guess since he married his girlfriend and they didn't like it, I guess his trust was taken away. I guess that's how that works. Or I don't really know because his his home after his stroke, his home was remodeled, and it was mentioned that it was remodeled with Grandpa's money. Hmm. So I don't know if it was this trust or Grandpa if it was gave him the money, or if after he had the stroke, they swooped in and said, you know, well, I mean, you know, he still is a Getty, so we still got to take care of him, or yeah. I, I have no idea, really. Okay, okay. I, I was just kind of curious about that. That was... Yeah, I, I, I don't really know for sure. Hmm. Wow. Wow. And then now he's got somebody famous, famous. That's crazy. That's so crazy. That... I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah, I figured last week and the week before was pretty heavy, so we should do one where nobody was murdered. There is no murder. No murder. But it was, it had plenty of twists and turns and, you know, wow. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very, very much. I enjoyed that. Now I feel good, good. Yay. I need to go stand in front of my heater because it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you go do that. I'm going to go make sure I didn't break my foot or anything because yeah. I'm afraid to move it. It, it, uh, I'm scared. We'll see. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we'll be back again next week, you guys. Hopefully, you'll join us. We'll have another new episode. <laughs> so until then, y'all, see you later. Okay, bye. Bye.